it's kind of a staff yeah. yeah so that so those three roles look familiar uh cost uh, and hiring and things like those uh that's uh, i'm not sure if that's part of the management plan and that's probably part of you know hiring and hr for, uh, stuff you know so i would say probably a is the answer here but i leave uh, i leave it open here all right so there might be a, a overlap between the resource management plan and the staffing management plan so you you may consider that staffing management plan uh, and resource management plan are one and the same thing however these are not so cost of each team member uh, is your answer correct that you think that belongs to the resource management plan not the staffing management plan however staffing management plan would tell you what you need to staff on your project okay what kind of skills that you need including the uh, skill set of the team members and the roles and the responsibilities and the communication methods i would go by your answer and then we'll leave you in the end well i think viram thinks it's d so you think that d is not the correct uh, d is the d is the correct answer uh yeah i think d because the skills and qualification we already know it's already there the engineer supervisor to our supervisor five i engineer to our worker so i don't think we need skills and qualification of each team member as plan mm. mm -hmm. okay all right let's go with this and then we'll review in the end all right so would you like to take the question eram mm Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not very much aware of it, but why not? <laughs> Let's try. Okay, so the company has zero tolerance for loss of its revenue base and reputation loss. Um, risk assessment shows that probability of supply disruption with a potential supplier is highly likely to occur, and it will cause significant loss of production cap capacity. What response the project manager should propose? Hmm. So first is transfer by buying insurance, avoid selecting supplier, mitigate by strict penalty for breach breaches, accept risk and select supplier. Hmm. <clears throat> um, I'm just guessing. Guessing this. Um, can be wrong, but I think transfer by buying insurance maybe. So you may have uh, a risk, and then you may decide the. Uh, the mitigation as you can transfer the risk to somebody else the third party so here the issue is that oh company does not want to take any risk they they have zero tolerance for uh, example when it comes to revenue and when it comes to their reputation and then working <laughs> with a uh, outsourcing partner or supplier um uh, there is a risk that the supply disruption is possible um okay because of their history uh, it will cause significant loss of productivity and the capacity so in the end company may lose some revenue and business continuity might be impacted so so in this scenario uh, is it wise that they should uh, buy an insurance and they should buy an insurance and mm -hmm. ask for the mm -hmm. loss no i don't yeah mm -hmm. or they should simply do not do the business with this supplier they avoid the selecting uh, such supplier or or they mitigate it by having some clauses in the contract that safeguards the company interest by putting some penalties or breaches for the breaches or they just simply accept the risk that what if it doesn't occur what if it occurs whatever loss we will have we will bear it so now in this context you guys can choose what should be done Yeah, I'm I'm confused between this avoid selecting supplier or accept risk and select supplier because I think um both are opposite of each other. So one is that we just drop this supplier from yeah, the list yeah. of possibilities. Mm. We don't do the business at all because the thing is we don't want to risk our reputation or neither the revenue base. Um, the other one is that we won't we won't be uh we will do the business with this supplier simply. We'll move on. and accept the risk uh, whatsoever will come will be a risk so um, i think i think yeah 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 go ahead <laughs> uh i think of all the choices right we have uh, we lost your name um, oh i'm sorry uh yep yeah. so so we have the option of uh, you know i mean it's a tough situation right so we need to have the production going on so that's that's what we need to do 
insurance could help us but uh, you know it will it won't really i think uh, it won't really resolve the issue right so the, the issue is to resolve is we have a situation where the supply is in short uh, we can either accept the risk and select the supplier that's the best we can have but uh, there could be a better choice uh, which is you know trying to mitigate right so just the word mitigate is really kind of you know uh, it's helpful here so mitigate by a strict penalty for breaches uh it's uh <laughs> i mean i mean what can the supplier do right uh, if they're not able to you know meet the supply it's just you know it's hard on them so i would say either c or d but uh, if it's a question i need to answer i can only pick one right so uh it's a tough one uh, but i think uh, i'll go with c i think okay do you agree kiran you know? um i mean even i am confused so let's just go with c probably yeah since it says the company has zero tolerance for loss i might go for avoid selecting supplier maybe just to be but yeah let's go with c for now all right mm -hmm. as a pm of the software management project you are in the process of gathering information to estimate project cost and duration accurately which document contains detail detailed description of the project features and functionalities and constraints or limitations imposed by stakeholders all right so out of the following four type of uh, documents or the options what is the document which contains product features and functionalities um can i try for this maybe yeah try yeah i think that could be requirements documentation um because project schedule resource breakdown structure it's registered i'm sure that could not be risk register um resource breakdown structure yeah I think requirement name um, documentation uh i think uh, the goal is to estimate right the cost and duration uh, so for that i think uh, work breakdown structure or resource breakdown structure could be an option um just if we re 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 read the question the questions takes like as a pm of a software development project you are in a process of gathering information okay about the product to estimate the project's cost and duration okay which document contains detailed description of features and functionalities so now you going to gather this information and write it somewhere to later on estimate the cost and the duration so mm -hmm. in this context do you think name c uh, would be answer or a yeah a a makes more sense i think requirements yeah. thank you all right now yes name you may read the uh, you are a project manager for construction of a community part okay park sorry typo it's a park okay construction of a community park okay you are identifying your stakeholders as part of project initiation okay which of the following is not a stakeholder uh, a resident of another community yeah maybe suppliers or contractors no government community of course they are project team members and sponsors so i think a is the answer here. yeah um just sharing with you some uh something which i lately saw on the linkedin the uh, lee lambert the the founder of the pmp last week he shared one post and uh, the post title was everyone is the stakeholder <laughs> so mm -hmm. so so i i literally wanted to uh, comment there that uh, what if someone has no stake at all in 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 whatsoever positive or negative mm -hmm. uh, right. but i think uh, in 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 his sense it was that you know we should not forget that uh, people who we may have identified or we may have not identified their interest so in this context uh, virtually possible possibilities are that everyone is a stakeholder but we may not know mm -hmm. that they have a stake or not <laughs> correct all right i will read this you are the pm of a agile software development project you have a highly motivated and self organized team that is committed to delivering value to customers you often inspire and empower your team members to take ownership of their work 
and pursue their personal and professional growth. What type of leadership style you are demonstrating? You are inspiring them, empowering them. So what kind of leadership style this this means? <clears throat> Can I guess this? I yeah, mean, right. that would be a uh, guess, but I think transformational leadership, if, if I have to guess one option here. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. B. I would agree also because it's like, you want to develop them from one stage to another stage. So, personally, yeah, exactly. professionally. So, it's transformation. Mm -hmm. Nine. Uh, Emily, the project manager, emphasizes the importance of forming a cross functional team with diverse skills and expertise to address the complexities of the software project effectively. So, emphasizing the importance of forming a team with diverse skills. Okay. Which team best describes a team that possesses all the capabilities to deliver the work they have been assigned and team members can specialize in certain skills while being capable of delivering the project's requirements? Uh, yeah, I think uh, this uh, self-organizing team, yeah, could be an option. Hierarchical team, maybe no. Uh, specialized team, yeah. Uh, Cross-functional team. So just before I pick C, I need to read the question again, uh, maybe silently, if it's okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, C is a uh, looks to be a good choice. What do you think? You know? Yeah, I, I would also go for a C option. Yeah, I would I've also go. Oh, I skipped it because the answer is somewhat uh, clear from the question itself. Yeah. Yeah, read. You know, you can take this question. Mm -hmm. So you are the project manager for a residential building construction project. Uh, the project is to build a 10-story apartment building in the city center. The building will have 50 residential units, a fitness center, a rooftop garden, and a parking garage for 75 cars. The project has a fixed budget and strict timeline of 18 months. The architectural design and floor plans have been approved. What is an example of the project scope for this construction project? Okay, so first is completion of the construction project within 18 months, um, construction of a 10-story apartment building in the city center, building 50 residential units, a fitness center, a rooftop garden and parking garage for 75 cars, approval of the architectural design and floor plans, uh, project scope for the construction. I think it could be completion of the construction project within 18 months. Um, yeah, I would say this is a constraint of the project that you must complete it within 18 months. Then it will be one okay. of the constraint, right? Not the scope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four, four we can drop, right? Approval of the architectural yeah. design and the floor plans is, oh, is right. a milestone. Yeah. 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 See, Maybe, look, see, uh, yeah. C looks to be a good choice, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, B or C. So you have a uh, high level scope Please and you have add. a project scope statement. Like you have a high level scope, which may be a construction of 10 story building. And then you, you have a project scope statement, which stays that says in detail that building 50 residential units, a fitness center, a rooftop garden. Yeah, I would also go with this. Let's see. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think the more details you have at the upfront, better it is. So. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Tanya is the project manager of an agile marketing campaign project. Okay, Tanya have a diverse and creative team that is constantly experimenting with new ideas and approaches. Okay, Tanya often encourages and rewards her team members for their contributions and achievements, and provides them with clear feedback and guidance. What type of leadership uh, style is Tanya demonstrating? Um, okay. Uh, I just need to read the <laughs> questions in silence now. So just give me a second here. I don't know. Again, uh, C looks to be more, I mean, it, it's a good word, right? Uh, maybe, I don't know. It's maybe B or C interaction. She, she's interacting with them. She's encouraging them. You know, she's trying uh, her team to try out new things 
but uh, experiment, you know, but here, uh, so if you try to go with the elimination process, A, probably no. Uh, interaction, maybe. Transformation, maybe. Transactional, I am not really sure what that might mean, but. Uh, so uh, from the reward, uh, if you just monetize it, it would become a transactional, right? I will give you X amount if you do this. This becomes transaction. But here it's not purely transactional. It's like you provide them kind of a feedback as well, uh, mm -hmm. but you encourage them and reward them as well. Um, it's like uplifting them. It's like, like transformational, like interactional would be, but certainly not purely transactional or charismatic, right? Yeah, so probably C again, yeah. Uh, if I had to pick an answer, but uh, maybe Adam has different opinions. So. Yeah, even I am uh, confused between B and C. So um, I think my... Way, yeah, mm -hmm. choose, choose, then I will let you one. One word is there in the question if you focus, but choose. Uh -huh. I would go for B maybe. See, there is a kind of interaction between them, like the leader talks and gives the feedback as well, right? Like yeah. They provide the clear feedback. So it, it gives some um, some some reference to the uh, interaction of the leader with the team, one-on-one -on -one basis, although they... Anyways, let's choose and we'll revisit the answer. What do you think, name B or C? Uh, let's go with B, I think. Okay. Looks like we have more time. We can take 15 questions instead of... 10. What do you think, guys? Shall we yeah. take five more? Yeah. Name, are you okay? Uh, yes, so I'll go ahead and read. So Sara, the project manager, has put up a project team for a new software development project. Okay. The project team members come from different departments and have varying working practices and communication styles. Clear. How can Sara effectively handle these individual and team differences to foster a collaborative team culture? Okay, this is this should be easy. Let's see. <laughs> Establishing team norms early in the project to guide behavior and conduct. Okay, this is a good answer. Uh, establishing team norms. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, implementing strict guidelines for team communications and work practices. Uh, um, yeah, uh, could be. Uh, utilizing uh, strength, weakness, opportunity, uh, threat analysis. To um, maybe uh, conducting a regular team building activities to improve relationships. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that could be an option. But what is the question? So Sara effectively, how can Sara effectively handle these individual and team differences to foster a collaborative team culture? Uh, so I think... Uh, the starting uh, with a base point is, is it's a, it's a good so you know uh, so I would say maybe establish team norms early uh, that would you know guide the the behavior and conduct of each individual and you know so that's a starting point and uh, but you want to go above that right so because to foster a kind of collaborative environment that may be a starting point. But uh, we need to do, do more things, right? So uh, B is probably a little more strict. So would like to avoid that. Um, B, SWOT, and as you individual strength and weaknesses. Yeah, that could be an option. C, uh, conducting regular team building activities to improve relationships. Yeah, C and D, you know, both could be it could be an option, but may not they might they might not be the starting point. So I'll go with A. What do you think? <laughs> Um, uh, I don't think it's A. I think it could be D. Um, so, uh, because I have experienced this, because at my workplace we do this, we do these activities. So I'm just on basis of that, I'm just going to go with conducting regular team building activities to improve relationships. Because I've seen doing this at workplace, so probably that's why. Yeah, when people came from different diverse backgrounds, they have different... Yeah in practices and communication styles. So uh, regular team building activities, you know, can improve the relationships. Um, again, um, the scenario in the question does not say anything that has gone, you know, wrong upfront. 
uh, which need the improvement of the relationships by informal activities. But uh, let's go with the with the D, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what's agree nine. Uh, yes, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's a practical answer actually the fourth one is that once you have the relationships established so you will have a more normalizing situation right all right let's take this question silently all of us <laughs> <laughs> yeah that helps okay yeah yeah name what do you think okay somebody answer i think no yeah i think um uh... You asked name, right? Okay, you can tell. Um, if I have to guess, I would go for maybe collaborate with the team to identify a resolution or uh, within the specified threshold. Um, does the specified threshold doesn't seem like a good word to me? I'm not sure. I can be wrong about this. Um, so would you? Yeah, I don't think it's B. Discard the issue as it falls. It can't be C, probably. So consult the PMO authority managing programming up. I think I, I would go with A maybe. Yeah. Nine. Um, yeah, so the issue is uh, a, a critical risk event has happened that is beyond, uh, that has exceeded the threshold value, right? So as soon as the threshold value exceeds, we should, uh, there are clearly defined policies for escalation. So I think uh, we should uh, escalate it as defined in, you know, by PMO. So you would mm -hmm. you would go for D, uh, B as a boy. I mean they have defined right. Uh, oh sorry, uh, yeah D is a good option too. Uh, yeah, I think uh, D is a good option. Yeah, because B and D. Uh, I mean we need to escalate, so that's one thing, right? So uh, I'll probably go with B maybe or D, B or D. I think <laughs> for sure. Okay, let's uh, take D. Um, so the point name emphasizing is that yeah. We already have assessed the situation that it's beyond our area of, uh, uh, if not within our realm that we take the decision, it's it's beyond our, uh, it needs an escalation. And we conducted an immediate evaluation of the situation with the team. And then let's see, let's let's see what, what would be the mm -hmm. threat. All right. So better the white option is the better one. Okay, let's see. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For this one, uh, there is no one, you know, clear answer to that would, you know, resolve that issue of uh, cost controlling. So, uh, so probably all of the above would be the answer here, which is C here. Yeah, it means that all of the uh, given options uh, are important when we talk about the cost controlling using tools or uh, dashboards for the evaluation and tracking the actuals against the baseline. So yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a general question, right? So general answers, general question. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think A is uh, it's a good answer. It's more of a common sense question as well. Would you agree, Iram? Yeah, let's go for uh, A, focus on value. Yeah, I think A and C uh, look good options. Um, uh, but smoothing is right when people, you know, find out between themselves, right? So, so I think uh, C could be uh, could be a better answer than A. So maybe C satisfies all partially satisfies all the stakeholder. Uh, maybe A. <laughs> oh, okay. This is uh, the yeah. Even I'm going towards A. Yeah, I think A, A looks to be a better choice uh, of all the three. Yeah. So in case of uh, resolving a conflict through smoothing, we would need to consider both parties, uh, hear them out, so that each person at least feel that they have been heard. And uh, let's go with A. Yeah, I think B is. Uh, it's uh, it's a good answer. I think I'm also going towards C. I mean, um, yeah, B could be the one too. Um, isolated team discussion. B or D? I'll go with D. B as a boy. But um, yeah, I'm confused between B and C. So, um, is it will it help? Will it help if you engage the remote team members? Uh, you're talking. 
Yeah, is it an issue? Why why do you think D C is the answer? Because the scenario in the question does not tell you that any issue with the engagement uh, need to be addressed for the remote team members. Right. I was going with this word delegate decision making authority to remote team member. Uh, maybe in that way they could be more responsible. But yeah, actually, um, it's simply people who are working together but not you know pushing the team goals. They are pushing forward their individual goals. So I see. To I think B would be the right choice, right? Yeah, I think we're done with fifteen. So yeah, let's review questions let's and then. Yeah. Let's see, it'll be past the PMP criteria. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, finish the test. Finished it. And we attempted 15 questions and 10 questions. Ten. Oh. Five are still wrong. Let's see. Yeah. So smoothing is correct. Let's first quickly go to the answers which we attempted. We couldn't attempt correct. Um, you have 10 of many workers, five engineers, and two supervisors. Oh, the communication and collaboration methods among the team members. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were kind of reversing uh, in it's our minds not. the staff management. And uh, yeah, so I guess staffing management plan here is probably the HR role they're referring to. Correct. And uh, the communication collaboration, that's like a team management kind of a thing. So yeah, so staffing mm -hmm. management is more of a HR management. Yeah. So there they would, you know, when they're hiring, they'll look at, you know, the budget they have, how many people to hire, what skills each should have, what, you know, role we are hiring for, things like those. So those three, okay, good to know. So yeah, staffing okay. management part of the HR stuff. Okay. Who was saying avoid? I think I was saying avoid so like uh, this one this one can be tricky right avoiding slip because <laughs> you have, i mean the reason you're going with the supplier is because you don't have an alternative right if you had an alternative you know there's no need right to worry about the situation so only if you don't have a you know a, an alternative supplier then you would run into the situation so maybe yeah. i would say the question is not very i mean yeah situation, question does not give you a uh, comparison between uh, a who uh, is uh, highly risky and B, which is slightly risky but costly. So had this been the situation uh, and you have zero tolerance for the delays, but you can afford a cost, I mean higher cost, then you would have chosen B. Uh, that would be a, a more convincing scenario name, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, when we are simply saying... Yeah, so there are yeah. two things, right? So one is... So company has zero tolerance, right? For loss of revenue, okay. Risk assessment shows, yeah. I think the word zero tolerance because they have no tolerance. So, you know, just avoid. So I think that that's what uh, the answer is for accepting that. It's okay. One, you know, we can let one go. Yeah. Aha, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. that's give and take, transactional. No, mm -hmm. Encouraging them with rewards. Uh, that's why it's uh, transactional leadership. Mm -hmm. okay, this is what it means, transactional. Okay. Uh, okay, understood. No, oh, okay, so 10A. Yeah, that made sense to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Establishing team, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's 11, it's clear, right? So, yeah, could have been either B and D, but uh, uh, they have clearly defined policies for escalation. So, I think that could have been... Whoever yeah. is the next in charge. Yeah. Okay, we can move on to the next one. Uh, so I think this this is the last one in the queue. And I think we are done. <laughs> right, sharp on time. Three minutes ahead of time. So any further questions you guys may have, then we can have, uh, I can take those questions during the next three minutes.